Hey, first of all, I have not forgotten about you. I'm really sorry I haven't made you a video in almost a year. It's just that it was really hard for me to do anything creative in the past year. And especially because I feel like we're living all the things that we were warned about in our high school books. Like, the government knows our every movement, they can hear our conversations, they can control what we know, what we see. Some animals are more equal than other. And I almost feel like we're kind of in the prequel to the Hunger Games, except this is real life. And I figured you're probably feeling really shitty too, because in the past year, not just the people in the United States, but people all over the world, everyday people, we were told that we have no power. We don't have, we don't have the power to change politicians that are in our government. We don't have the power to protest and accomplish change through that. We don't have the power to know what's really going on uh, through the news. I mean, all kinds of crazy shit happened last year. So in this video, I want us to talk about the complete opposite things, which are that everyday people do have the power to change the world. We're going to be the ones that make America great again, or the whole goddamn world great again, or for the very first time. Last year, after Bernie Sanders had his candidacy stolen from him, I almost lost hope in humanity because I felt like I kept waiting for somebody to come save us. Like, is the FBI gonna come and take out that bitch Hillary Clinton to jail finally? And as we learned, no, nobody came to save us. And at first, like I said, that made me really depressed that we can't really trust our uh, government agencies um to protect us basically but when it was all over um not only am i glad that we have trump and not hillary clinton because he's gonna get impeached any moment now but what that revealed to me was like we have so much power that the government is actually afraid of us they're so afraid of us that they have to put a fake candidate they have to rig elections they have to do all these crazy things just so that we do not get our way because we were going to get our way. Millions of us wanted Bernie Sanders in power because we knew he was a good person in comparison to all the other politicians that we've seen before. We are seeing the people in power freak out when large masses of people come together with a single-minded goal. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. How can we all come together? To make America great again because it's certainly not gonna happen through voting that's for sure but before we get there I kind of want to talk about how do things get so crazy like it didn't just happen from one day to the other and I was watching this documentary that you might want to check out it's called hyper normalization I found it on YouTube and it was made by the BCC um, so you can find it online for free on YouTube if you just search for it and essentially it was saying that as we had more and more technology in our everyday lives, our world became smaller. Um, figuratively speaking, we, we pay attention to less and less things as we have more technology coming through our lives. And we see crazy things going on around the world and we acknowledge that they're crazy, but we just look away from them and go back to our little lives. And I think for the older generation, it was a little bit easier to look away because they just simply have more money. They have more money to travel the world or buy whatever things that they they needed and wanted. But as our generation knows, if we have a good paying job that we can pay our loans, it's like we're lucky. If we are able to rent a place and have a job and have a car and have things that our previous generations have considered basic necessities, we actually feel grateful because we know not everybody our age is able to afford those things anymore and so many of us are deeply unhappy with our lives and we can't just look away from the reality of our everyday life and we don't have the money to buy things that are going to distract us and in addition to that we're on the internet 24 7 we're on twitter reddit youtube 
Anytime that we hear anything crazy or outrageous, we can go online, research it, check the facts, and make an opinion about it. And older generations weren't able to do that. So, so the way that we can just do it in seconds, right? So I think it was just easier for older people to not care about knowing what's really going on. Whereas I think for our generation, it's impossible not to know what's actually going on around the world and what injustices are happening to people every single day of every color, of every race, of every social status. The one good thing with the internet is that it's actually allowed us to be a little bit more politically involved and people are always making fun of the fact that oh we want to be politically involved through you know social media but if you actually look at recent times social media has had a really big role in revolutions like in the arab spring i think everybody was using twitter in order to tell each other what was really going on because the news and the media outlets were not allowed to say anything and everybody was kind of able to get together by using social media and tell one another what was going on and i think we saw a little bit of that last year with all the things that the media refused to cover but people on twitter on facebook on youtube all over the all over the world people are now telling one another what's actually going on and we can actually bypass those media outlets that are paid for by the government and i think what we see more and more is people that are more not just interested in being politically active but actually being politically active like i don't know if you heard there's a small group of teenagers that are like trying to sue the government and they've they've been winning the smaller battles to actually sue the united states corporations for damaging the environment and leaving the future generations with a terrible planet basically so there's people of all ages fighting for a better world and the internet is just making it easier for us to connect and to know about those things so if you pay attention you'll know that there are thousands of us if not millions or billions that are ready to fight for our basic necessities and fight for one another so that we can just have so that we can just live decent lives not necessarily luxurious lives but that we can all have health education food and shelter etc just our basic needs however what's also actually really easy to see through social media is how divided people are it's like white people this black people that feminists this gay people that and it's like it reminds me of this concept i learned in a, a really simple assignment i had in college and i came across this um, term called divide and conquer which the british use in order to conquer new territory and what they did was they went into um, a country and they got the different ethnic groups to start fighting amongst each other and if the ethnic groups were so busy fighting each other's all their resources would be invested into fighting each other they wouldn't have numbers big enough to actually fight the real enemy which was the british but if those ethnic groups were to have come together they might have been able to stop the real enemy which was the british from coming into their country but because we were so divided their resources were split their time was split and they couldn't come together and put up a good fight and so the it was really easy for the british to come in and just get control of the territory and i feel like that's actually what's happened to us we're so divided and we're so we insist on looking at our differences so much that we actually can't see that we're not each other's enemies we may be different but at the end of the day i think all most human beings we all want the same basic things and if we all got together and fought the real enemy we could actually get them done If you really think about it, it's the corporations that are our real enemy. They're the ones that are harming the planet. They're keeping us in debt by encouraging us to live beyond our means. They're creating wars all over the world so that they can sell guns. 
They're keeping us from receiving adequate health care and affording medicine and all kinds of crazy shit. At the root of all evil, I think is the corporations that are the ones to blame. And I think politicians are just puppets. It's the corporations that are controlling everything behind the scenes. If you really stop to think about it, it's us that decide who are the rich and powerful because we're the ones that buy their stuff. Like we literally give them our money for their services, for all the stuff that we have in our homes. So I think it's, it's us, the masses, the everyday person that decide who is rich and powerful. And if we want to change the world, it's in our power to change who's in power and who's rich and who's controlling everything that's behind the scenes. So if we really want to make the world a better place, we have to stop supporting businesses that use evil means to make money. Like we have to stop supporting businesses that use slave labor or make things in sweatshops or um, stop buying products that harm the environment. We have to stop watching movies that sell racist thoughts and so that means I think if we want to make America and the world great for the very first time, then that means you have to put yourself under a microscope and you have to make yourself great again or for the very first time. We have to examine our values, our beliefs, and really pay attention to where our money is going and where our attention is going. As we spoke in another video, when it comes to the internet, our attention translates to money. So we really need to be careful of all of our actions really and I think that's the most challenging part that from now on we have to vote with our lifestyle because voting like for candidates not only does it not work but when we actually get together for a good candidate the government can do away with it so I think we really have to make ourselves great again if we want to change the world for the better and the crazy thing is, most adults already know this, but the reason I think most good people don't go about doing this is because it's really difficult. It's Most of the time, we buy the things that we buy because that's what we can afford. Um, it's, really, it's really difficult to live a 100% socially responsible lifestyle unless you're rich because the world, the people in power, have made it difficult to be socially responsible if you're not rich. Most of us just get things that are cheap because that's what we can afford, but just because we can't live a 100% perfect socially responsible lifestyle doesn't mean we don't try to live a, a more socially responsible life. And like I've said before, there's nobody that's perfect. There's no perfect revolutionary. There's no perfect activist or mom, or son, or daughter, or anything. So don't, don't let that challenge make you feel like you shouldn't even try, because that's the worst thing that you could do. So I think in order for us to undertake this plan of action, we have to make little changes, and we have to challenge ourselves to accomplish small goals. Like I've said in another video, it's actually been proven that if you give yourself small goals and you accomplish them, that actually makes you feel more encouraged to set bigger goals and accomplish those as well as you move forward. And so don't be afraid to just challenge yourself and set very little goals along the way and just move on to bigger and bigger goals um, until you do just as, as the best that you can at whatever moment. In your life. Recently I was watching the Joe Rogan podcast and I heard this interesting quote which went something like um, we could all change the world if we didn't care about getting the credit um, and it was an episode 812 um, I'm not sure the actor's name that said it but you can look it up on YouTube it's free as well and what this quote meant to me was 
we all want to do so many big things and we dream about changing the world in big ways but very few can very few of us can do that because of money or authority or whatever but at the same time last year we were absolutely told that we cannot change the world through big actions not only can we not change the world through voting but we cannot change the world by protesting so many people protested against the Dakota, North Dakota pipeline and they're still gonna go through and build the goddamn thing there were so many whistleblowers telling the truth and many of them were uh, persecuted out of the country, put in jail, or simply just killed. So while we might want to do like a big revolutionary action, it's actually kind of dangerous if you think about it, because you're singling yourself out. But if we all do small revolutionary acts, like I really do believe, like for example, people that are vegetarian they're doing the best they can to see the kind of world that they believe should exist so while i don't want to be vegetarian i can learn from them and i can say you know what i think like for example animals are mistreated in the way that we um consume meat but i don't want to go fully vegetarian but what's a small action that i can still do is i can eat less meat and so I started doing that, for example. So I th imagine if we, all of us, start making little changes all around our lives. And it's many and many and thousands and millions of us that start making little changes all over the place. All of those changes will add up. And if you think about it, you're not going to single yourself out if you go about trying to be a revolutionary that way. If you just do little things in your life, nobody can come and chase all of us at once and if you're not singling yourself out then why would anybody come and harm you so it's actually an even better way to be a revolutionary through small actions in your life And like I said last year, I felt so depressed and that I couldn't even make these videos. And in a way, I feel like these videos are my small way of trying to become a revolutionary. I want to tell everyday people like we do have the power to fight for what's right in the world and and the things that are going on that are that we know are wrong. And I couldn't even do that last year because I felt so terrible. So I went even smaller and I focused just on myself. What can I do to be better so that when I'm strong enough, I can help you and others? And I went about it two ways. One of them was I really focused on eating healthier. And to, for me, that was actually very small. I just had to make sure I ate more veggies with every meal. And, and I decided to eat less pasta. If you think about it, what is the consequence of that action? is I'm creating, in a small way, I'm creating more demand for veggies from the supermarkets I shop at, um, which then the supermarket is going to go and try to buy more veggies from farmers, right? Uh, so imagine if we all start, start doing things like that. Our actions, I do really believe our actions will um, multiply the effect. And that's a really small thing. I didn't even have to go out of my way to do something drastic i just literally ate a little bit more veggies and fruits that was something really small but that actually even though it was completely selfish in a way on the on the other side it's actually beneficial to other people indirectly at the same time um and then my other goal was um i began to learn how to kickbox because number one i found the sport and i really loved it but also, um, last year when I was feeling really depressed, I kept thinking of that quote from Fight Club that's like, how much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? And I didn't think about it so much like, um, literally. What I felt was, who am I to tell you to fight if I don't even know how to fight myself? And so what I decided to do was 
really concentrate on learning how to fight and learning as much as I can about fighting so that my videos can be better if they're even gonna if they're even to help you a little bit right and something that I learned one of the very first things that I learned is that you you don't you can't control your opponent the only thing you really have control over is yourself and so I th really think that if we want to make America great again we have to begin by making ourselves great again on whatever small way that we can and just because you're doing something like very little like maybe eating less meat or whatever you shouldn't feel like you're not doing enough you're doing the best that you can and as long as you're doing the best that you can then why can't you feel good about that you should absolutely feel good about all the goals that you were able to accomplish on your way to being a revolutionary in whatever way that you want to be and I'm not gonna tell you which which changes you should make in your life because we should all be making different changes in all areas of our lives and but really the ones that, sh that matter the most to us because if I'm just to tell you something you're not gonna enjoy the process and it's not gonna mean anything to you Ultimately, I think the effect of all of our actions combined um, are that the businesses will have to change themselves if they want our money. Like I told you in another video, Walmart had to start selling organic food because so many of its customers were demanding organic food. Um, and I, I think if we start demanding different things like taking care of the environment, doing business in a way that doesn't harm people animals the environment and we start supporting businesses that actually do that the people that lose business when they realize that they're gonna <laughs> their business is gonna tank they're gonna have to change themselves because just like we can't control them they can't control us we can only control like our own person so if we change our actions in the long run i think we will indirectly change the actions of those in power so yeah thank you so much for watching if you still are um please let me know what you think of the video quality this is a new camera i actually felt like making a video last week and i went in to plug my camera and i waited so long to make a video that my camera is actually totally dead and it won't even um charge anymore and so i actually had to wait a little bit to get a new camera and um, I'm trying out new lights as well, which I bought a year ago before I started to stop making videos. So just let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for sticking around. I'm going to be making videos more regularly again. Um, but you know that I only make videos. I only want to make videos when I have something good to tell you. So, And also, like I promised in the last video, I'm going to give away three of my paintings. I'm gonna give away this one, this one, and this one. Just leave me a comment and I'll reply to you and then we can figure out how to connect over social media so that I can mail it to your house. And I'll just randomly pick one of the comments from one of the comments below. Just FYI, make sure you have your settings um, turned on for when you get comments and stuff like that. Um, I don't really know how to send messages on YouTube so I don't really know how to do that anymore, how to like where it is on your dashboard. So I'm just gonna reply to your comment below. And yeah, that's that's all I have for you today. Please subscribe if you'd like to continue talking about world domination. And don't let don't let all this crazy shit bring you down, you know. Um it's okay to feel all the negative emotions, but let them make you a stronger person and figure out how to become a revolutionary. And if we all figure out how to become revolutionaries in ways that don't single ourselves out, even better. Because we saw last year some really scary shit happened to whistleblowers. And it actually really made me think that I kind of want to put this on a video that I kind of see myself as a whistleblower, and which is scary. And I know that with these videos, even, um, even though I don't have a crazy big channel, I know that with these videos I kind of do single myself out and after what I saw happening last year I just want you to know like just that it's on the record that I would never commit suicide and if anything were to happen to me at any moment 
uh, later in life that it was not me. Like the, I think the only way I would commit suicide if it was like old, like 80 years old or something, <laughs> and there was no reason to live. And so basically, I would never commit suicide. Is what I want you to know. And um, you know, hopefully, nothing ever happens to me. But I just wanted to make that known because. I do I do understand that I I single myself out making these videos and not in the positive in a positive way in the eyes of the people in power and the people around the world so wish me luck <laughs> Anyway see you next time